Hi guys, and welcome to the fourth video in the series on coding your very own DIY gaming console, BIT. In this video, we'll show you how to make an amazing game that the wacky robots named Circuit Flat. Let's kick things off. Click on the new sketch and type in Circuit Flap. Once again, we can hide the code editor since we'll be using blocks. Now we can start coding. First, let's create a sprite for our character. Click on the three dots located in the top right corner and select Sprite Editor from the drop down menu. Now click on the plus icon and put the following dimensions for your new sprite 17 times 12 pixels. Let's draw. You can use the color picker to select the color you want and then use the paintbrush tool to place pixels of that color onto the grid. If you make a mistake, you can simply erase it with the eraser tool as shown here. The paint bucket tool can be used to fill in whole areas and if you ever need to choose the same color you already used, the color dropper is a handy tool for that. Now it's time to draw our bird. It doesn't matter if your bird doesn't look the same as mine. It's only important that you set the same dimensions for the sprite. When you're satisfied with your drawing, Type in bird as the name of your sprite and click on the save button. Now we can close the sprite editor. Let's create all the variables we'll need for this game. There's gonna be 14 of them. Jump velocity, jump strength and gravity which will define the movement of the player. Player position X and player position Y which will define the position of the player. Points to keep the score. Jump and jump lock. These are used to define whether the player is currently jumping. Tubes position X, tubes gap position Y, tubes height, tubes speed and tubes width to define the obstacles. And finally, player dead to define whether the game is over. Now let's define these variables. Set the jump velocity to zero at the start of the game since the player hasn't jumped yet. Set the jump strength to four and gravity to 0.4. These variables won't change throughout the game, but we still need to define them. Now let's define the position of the player at the start of the game, meaning the position of the bird we drew earlier. Set player position X to 10 and player position Y to 30. These are the X and Y coordinates. We start the game with zero points, so set the points variable to zero. Set jump and jump lock to false. We'll talk more about these variables later. Set the tube position X to 128. This will be the X coordinate of the tube at the start of the game. Set the tube's gap position Y to 50. This will be the position of the gap you'll need to go through on the first tube. Set the tube's gap height to 55. This will be the height of the gap. Set the tube's speed to 3. This will define the speed at which the tubes will be moving towards you. Set the tube's width to 20. This will be the width of the tubes. These variables determine everything regarding the tubes that represent obstacles in this game. The goal of the game is to avoid the tubes that will come from the right side of the screen for as long as possible without falling down. 
Finally, set the player dead variable to false at the start of the game. Now let's make the function for drawing the background. Create a new function, call it draw background, put the fill frame width block from the display section and set the color to cyan. This will represent the sky in the background. Let's create another function and name it draw overlay. This function will be used to display points during the game and our final score at the end. First, put the points variable inside the right block from the display section. Set the coordinates to x equals 5 and y equals 5 and the color to black. Now, put the if do block from the logic section and place the player dead variable inside the if statement. If we lose the game, we want the screen to turn black and our final score to be displayed. To do that, put these blocks and adjust them as shown here. We can also write the message press B below, indicating that we can reset the game. Great, we're done with this function. Let's create another function for respawning the player when we reset the game. We'll name this one player respawn. You can simply duplicate the following variables from the start. Player position Y, jump velocity, jump, jump lock, points and tube position x and place them inside this function. Now it's time to draw our character and define its jump velocity at any given moment. Create another function and name it draw player. Place the if do block inside. Now let's explain the jump and jump lock variables. The jump variable will be set to true whenever our character jumps. The jump lock variable is here to prevent the player from holding the up button and making the character continuously move upwards. Put the end block from the logic section inside the if statement and place the jump and not jump lock blocks inside. Set the jump lock to true and the jump velocity to jump strength inside the do statement. Put another if do block and place a comparison block inside it. If the player position y is equal to or less than 0, we want to set the jump velocity to minus gravity. This ensures that our character can't go over the upper edge of the screen, as doing so would automatically change its velocity to plummet down. Finally, if our character touches the lower edge of the screen, the game is over. Put the if do else block, duplicate the blocks from the previous if statement and adjust them as shown here. Now, set the player dead variable to true inside the do statement. Inside the else statement, we'll define the movement of our character and draw it on the screen, as these are only important while the game is still running. Set the player position y to player position y minus jump velocity. This will update the position of the player depending on the jump velocity variable which we defined earlier. Now let's draw our character. Take the draw sprite block from the display section, 
select the bird sprite we created earlier and set the coordinates to player position X and player position Y. Finally, set the jump velocity to jump velocity minus gravity as we want the gravity to impact the player at all times. We're done with this function, so let's move on to the next one. Let's call this new function draw tubes. As the name suggests, we'll use this function to draw the tubes that our player needs to jump through. Place the if do else block inside it. First, we want the tube to respond when the player goes through it and the tube is no longer visible on the screen. Put the comparison block inside the if statement and check if the tube's position x is lower or equal to minus 20. This means that the tube is no longer visible on the screen. When that happens, we want to set the tube's position x to 128, meaning that this new tube has been created on the other side of the screen. We also want this new tube to have a randomly placed gap. To do that, set the tube's position y to a random integer from 20 to 118 minus the tube's gap height variable. This will ensure that the gap is not placed too low or too high, and it will also set the height of the gap according to the tube's gap height variable. Set the tube's position x to tube's position x minus tube's speed inside the else statement to ensure that the tubes move towards the player at all times. Finally, let's draw the tubes. Put the draw field rectangle block from the display section. Set the width to tube's width height to 128, x to tube's position x, y to 0 and color to green. Now let's draw the gap. Put another draw field rectangle block and set the width to tube's width, height to tube's gap height, x to tube's position x, y to tube's position y and color to cyan. Let's create our last function. This function will be used to detect collision, so let's call it collision detection. Put an if do block inside this function. The collision can only happen when the player is trying to pass through the gap on the tube. To define that, put the following blocks inside the if statement. Now we need to check if the player is touching the tube while trying to go through the gap. Place an if do else block inside the do statement and place the following blocks inside the if statement, as shown here.
If the player is not touching the tubes as we defined here, we need to check if the player has passed the tubes and update the score in that case. To do that, place another if do block inside this do statement and set it up as shown here. However, if the player touches the tube, we need to end the game. To do that, set the player dead variable to true inside the else statement. We're done with functions. Let's define the inputs. We'll use the B button to reset the game. Put the when B button pressed block and set the player dead variable to false inside it. We also need to trigger the player respawn function, so put this block inside as well. We'll use the A button to jump, so set the jump variable to true inside the when A button pressed block. We also need the when A button released block as we want to set the jump and jump lock variables to false when that happens. Now, let's trigger these other five functions inside the loop forever block. Don't forget to include the scan buttons, push frame and sleep 5 milliseconds block to ensure proper code execution. Well done, you're done with coding. Click the run button in the top right corner and upload the code to your device. Try pressing the A button to keep your character afloat and go through the gaps. How many points can you collect before you touch the tubes or fall down? Press the B button to reset the game and try again. Well done, you programmed a new game onto your device. If you want to put the stock firmware back onto your device, you can just go here and click on the Restore Firmware button. Thank you for watching this video and see you on the next level!